to Australia in the Warwick Farm Raceway here for round number five of the Tasman series for 1966. We finally made it to the second part of the championship after completing the first four rounds in New Zealand. And it just came off an excellent win at Daytona with the four GT in the 24, beating Ferrari, Pedro Rodriguez and Mario Andretti. Uh, after the full race distance, Richie Ginther and I came out victorious. So hoping to take a little bit of that momentum here to kick off the second half of the season for the Tasman series. And what a championship it's been so far. If we take a look at the points, Jim Clark has two wins in the first half of the season with a second place as well, and dropped his non-point scoring finish in round three. So he's got a total of 24 points ahead of myself, Richie Axelson there in second. I've got 17 points. I was able to pick up a win last time out, uh, but I got a second place as well. Where I'm really hurting though is from that first round uh, at Pukekohe. I got two points there, which is not so bad overall, but in such a short championship, you don't have time to not score a lot of points, especially if you're racing Jim Clark. Uh, behind me as well, Jim Palmer, Spencer Martin tied there with 10 points uh, for third. So it'll be interesting to see how things shake out between them, but hopefully overall, uh, I can stay ahead. And in the second part of the championship, we're in Australia, the three blue rounds uh, are drop, or could be considered drop races if uh, the points aren't good. So we'll drop the lowest of the three blue rounds remaining. And of course the next round will be a, uh, a must score with the Australian Grand Prix. But for this race, all I gotta do is try to maximize my points and hopefully finish in front of Jim Clark if I wanna have any hope at winning this championship. So we're here at Warwick Farm, and this was round number five in real life, the Tasman 100, won by Jim Clark. And this was one of the only rounds of the real season where he didn't have mechanical issues. Was always quick, but often had those mechanical. So this one, he didn't have any issues with the car, was able to win from Graham Hill and Frank Gardner. Pretty interesting note, uh, Jackie Stewart actually clipped a fence I believe on the first or second lap, and it says took a chunk out of his rear tire. Was luckily luckily able to get away with that one. Um, quite a crazy type of incident to have in these days and, and not have a big accident, but he finished down in fourth and Spencer Martin in fifth. Jim Palmer round out the points with a sixth place finish in real life. Uh, and it was said as well, Frank Gardner did try out a, a new V12 Maserati engine in his Brabham, but uh, decided to stick with the old reliable and put that away. Still no sign of Jack Brabham himself, uh, even though we're back in Australia, but I believe he will be trying to join the series in the last couple rounds of the season. And if we take a look at the circuit, Warwick Farm is a really interesting track. This is a pre-release version of Warwick Farm for Grand Prix Legends, and I have to thank the folks over at SRMZ, the Sim Racing Mirror Zone, for lending this one to me in its beta form. It's a beta circuit, but it performs really well. Uh, maybe there's a couple graphical things to fix here and there, but it's so nice to be able to race on the real circuits rather than stand-in ones for this championship. So I have to thank the team working on the Tasman mod for letting me show this stuff off a little bit before it comes out. This track though, Warwick uh, Farm was inside and outside of a horse racing track, which I believe is still there. Uh, this circuit was abandoned in the early 70s uh, for a racing circuit, but did have a lot of racing throughout the 1960s and early 70s with formula cars and touring cars, held the Australian Grand Prix for quite a few years. Uh, and so it was quite the prestigious track and it's a really interesting one. Uh, the track's got a lot of curves in it and it feels a little like a street circuit because the barriers in, in many places are very close, but through two Two parts of the circuit, the Western Crossing and the Northern Crossing, we actually cross the horse racing circuit. And especially in the Northern Crossing, although I think the same in the Western, they actually put some material over the horse racing track that the cars go over so it wouldn't disturb the surface. So you'll see that as we race, but it's quite the interesting circuit. We go over this causeway, which basically circles a lake and then come out through some open corners towards the end. Very challenging. It's gonna to be tough to pass most of all, and because I'm still racing my BT12 with the 2.5 liter Climax engine, I'll be a little down on power still uh, for some of the other cars. So looking at the practice results, this is not a race that we're gonna have heat races for. We just had a practice session qualified and we're gonna do the full race. So this is how we'll line up. We've got Jim Clark on the pole with a 131 flat, which is so much faster than everybody else. I'm really hoping he doesn't take that speed and go with it during the race, but we'll have to see. Uh, Frank Gardner 
is lining up second with Graham Hill returning for BRM, uh, taking over for Richard Atwood, who filled in for him for many races, back with the Tasman Series here, alongside his teammate Jackie Stewart. And then myself, Richie Axelson, lining up in fifth. So you can see we're quite close between third uh, and even second through fifth, uh, but Jim Clark's in a league of his own, so I have to hope that he gets caught up in something or maybe has one of those Lotus mechanical gremlins uh, that, that gets him to slow down a little bit. So I'm excited to get back to some Grand Prix racing after doing the sports cars. Had a lot of fun there, but this one will be more of a burst of speed. We're doing 14 laps at Warwick Farm. Uh, the real race was run over 45 laps of the circuit. So why don't we get started with this, the 1966 Tasman 100. All right, so here we are on the grid, second row. We've got a whole line of cars in front. Jackie Stewart's my inside, flag is up, down. We're underway. Oh, getting a slow roll off. Graham Hill, not getting a good start. I'm gonna get caught up behind him. Was able to get around Jackie. Oh, car oversteering a little bit. Looks like Jim Clark did leap to the front. We'll come over the horse track there now dip it on this longer straightaway, which is gonna be my weakest part of the circuit, and head towards a hairpin up here called Creek Corner. Looks like Graham Hill's looking to the inside. A little late on my shift there, but we'll break it down heavily, down to second, down to first. Whoa, Graham Hill all over the circuit. Oh, and he's making a move upside. Frank Gardner, the inside there. Now we'll come through the S's, and this is just not an easy place to pass. There's guardrails on either side of the circuit too to make it even more difficult. All right, but these two really going at it. We'll head over the other part of the horse circuit there. Oh, the two in front touching. I can see Hill with his fist raised. Now we'll come to the causeway down to second gear. Oh, leaving the inside open there for a second. I have to dip out of it over the causeway bridge. Oh, trying to get up the inside of Gardner. These two in front going through a heck of a battle. Try not to get caught up in that. See if I can sneak around the inside of Gardner here as we'll come towards the end of the lap. He's gonna outbreak me into the final corner. Oh, we'll come to the line, complete lap one. So a mad scramble in the early laps here. Graham Hill able to get out into second. And Jim Clark just pulling away up there. Come over the horse racing circuit again, try to get a good run through this corner. Oh, a lot of oversteer there. Oh, and I can see Jackie Stewart behind me pulling in, trying to defend the inside a little bit. He's gonna try to break in there, but I'll break late. Oh, Jackie up my inside. Try to get a good run out of it. Should have the advantage through there, yeah. Making it on Jackie then. I'm fairly quick through the twisty stuff. It's the long straights that get me. And luckily, most of the lap is twisty. Over the horse circuit there, it's really bumpy. down towards the causeway, easy to run wide coming into here. Gardner out wide again. Oh, almost running into his gearbox there. Just don't want to clink suspensions that would make things even more difficult around here. Oversteer to understeer. Come into the final corners. One of those that's easy to overdo. All right, come to the line. Got a pretty good run down the front straight away. So we come to Paddock Bend, down to first gear. Just settle in here. Oh, Graham Hill on the inside's got some kind of mechanical issue. The fist raised, so maybe made some contact or something with Frank Gardner there. But looks like Graham Hill might be out of the race, so I've been promoted up to, I think, third position here. Down a first gear for the hairpin. Get back into the S's. I feel like I'm so much quicker than Gardner. But now nowhere to pass through here. So 
just get onto the back of him. He's going to keep it on the racing line. But maybe he'll swing wide through the causeway again. Just going to have to be a high commit to pass there. Coming in. Oh, down a second. He does swing out wide. Able to hold it there, make the pass up the inside of Gardner. All right. Oh, let's try to just focus here through the final couple of corners. Need to pull out a little bit on him. All right, we'll come to the line, complete another lap. Check my pit board next time by. Just trying to concentrate on this beginning of the lap because I'm afraid of the straightaway coming up if he's too close. Oh, oversteer there. Car getting all weird. Oh, it was bad driving, but the car got strange over the bumps that crossed the horse track. And Gardner sneaks up the inside again. There's a little bump as you go over the crossing there, and it looks, it feels like the car got kind of upset on it, I'm not sure. We'll just try to get the position back, focus forward again. Maybe I can get him in the same spot. Oh, almost gonna run into the back of Gardner there. Oh, oversteer. The car is very sensitive around the circuit, but I found I had to set it up to be quite aggressive just to have enough speed. The circuit is always turning. All right, so not able to make the move that time. We'll try to swing it out wide. We got a white flag, probably Graham Hill maybe. Slow ahead. All right, coming to the final corner. It's nice and easy. We're going to run a little wide. All right, come across the line. Start another lap. The laps are pretty quick here. Minute 30. So the race will not be too long. All right, a little better that time through there, but still quite slow. Gardner pulling ahead a little bit, so was able to get around him right at the beginning, but he's now pulling out on me. And Jim Clark is way ahead. Just ease it through the S's. You can get a really nice rhythm around this circuit <laughs> when you're not trying to race somebody else. We're gonna slide a little wide, just power through it. Not quite close enough this time, although he leaves the door open. Takes a really wide line on the uh, coming into the corner. Just ease it around. This is kind of a weird late apex corner. Haven't quite figured it out, honestly. We'll come into the final turn. All right, so take a look at the pit board. So P3 with nine laps to go. Gardner in front, Stewart behind. Oh, we're gonna slide a little bit there, try to get the late apex, get the throttle down. Over the hump. So right with Gardner now, he's going to pull a little bit out here down the straightaway, but much closer than last lap. Try to be handy on the braking here down to first. Oh, a lot of oversteer there. Just let the car take it. Ugh. I had to back out of it a little bit. Don't want to slide into the walls. Oversteer again, but we're much closer coming down to Causeway. Second gear, oh, late. Surprising him there up the inside, but 
able to make the position once again. All right, then a second, we'll just try to get a little space on him. I feel like, is that Jim Clark in front still? So maybe we haven't totally lost touch. All right, we'll come to the line though. Well, so not a race I could relax in at all just yet. Down a third gear through turn one. Try to get this corner better. Although Gardner's right on me now. Understeering a bit there. See if I can keep the inside line, make him take the long way. He's pulling up behind me. first just don't want to slide wide able to keep in front of Gardner though I'll see if I can pull out through the S's third gear there oh I'm gonna slide a little wide grabbing the dirt come over the horse track here Right down a second gear and I think that is Jim Clark in front so he hasn't pulled out this massive lead that I thought he might but cementing my second place over Gardner this lap coming to the final corner gonna run a little bit wide try to do a late apex so seven laps to go, P2. Just concentrating on trying to get the car, keep the high speed up as much as I can because accelerating is not my strong suit. All the way down the gears from fifth to first. And you see what I mean about this part of the circuit being almost like a street track with the barriers being so close to you there. Now dipping back across to the infield. Oh, we're gonna run a little bit wide there, but pulling in on Clark, so he got off to a quick lead but maybe having some kind of issues or something not able to keep pulling away oh and a slow car ahead coming to the final corners see if we can both work our way around it successfully yeah there we go oh but Clark got held up ever so slightly oh and I'm pulling in on Clark so much now all right we'll come to the line though Right on the back of Jim Clark, fighting for the lead here. Just nice and easy. Coax it around the corners, weird late apex here. Ooh, got a good exit. And actually pulling up on Clark, despite the power differential. We'll come down to the hairpin, up the inside. Down a first gear. Oh, try not to slide wide into him. He will, of course, have remembered our 1965 battles. Oh, around the outside into the S's, but able to make the pass for the lead. Now let's see if I can pull away. Oh, we're gonna touch the curbing there. So something I think definitely wrong with Jim Clark. If I was able to pull him in that quickly, he was long and gone at the very start of the race but however it happens we'll take it just try to come around these final couple of corners over the causeway there oh a little bit out of line keep it in third for the final corner all right onto the front straight away we'll take a look at the pit board Five laps to go, 
I'm in P1 now, I passed Clark there. The crew will now have seen it. So five laps just to put together, hopefully not gonna hit too many lap cars or anything. But Jim Clark fading in the mirrors, so pulling away. It was a great way to start the Australian round. I really didn't think after qualifying that I would be anywhere near quick enough to win, unless there were some kind of issues yet to be seen. Oh, a lot of sliding there, drifting the car through these corners. Keep it in third gear for quite a long time here, which is nice. These lower, lower power engines, you find yourself shifting a lot at a lot of tracks just to keep the engine in the power band, but the circuit actually not a ton of shifting, just a gear here or there. All right, gonna run a little bit wide. Can't seem to get that corner right, but it's all working out for me. We'll come to the line, P1, four laps to go. Over two seconds on Clark behind. Over the little hump there that upset the car earlier. And on the straightaway. Really cool circuit though, I love the fans and the wooden walls on either side. It feels like you're definitely racing in Australia. It's a little bit different than what you would see in the European or American tracks. Correct a bit of oversteer there. Just play chicken with the barriers. Oh, gonna run a little wide there. Luckily no wall on that corner. a second for the causeway so easy to run wide there and the other side of that berm there's a long downhill so certainly would be race over all right up to third oh gonna slide a little bit wide there three more laps Oh, and I'm ahead of Gardner now, so Jim Clark definitely had an issue because he was so much quicker at the start of the race, so something must have broke on the Lotus. So pressure's really off, just need to put the lap times together, put the smooth laps together. But this will be really good for the championship. Don't want to think I'm winning just yet, but especially with Jim Clark maybe falling out of the race. Come down to first gear here for the hairpin. You can see the car is entering the hairpin as I'm exiting it. It's always a good feeling when you're far ahead. A little bit wide there, but making it work. Slide it over the horse, horse circuit, yeah. Sliding a little wide there too. Really, really cool circuit, rhythm track, 100%, and I can see why it would be a lot of fun in a touring car just to beat up, beat up on each other around here side by side. A little bit scary in a formula car. Understeer to oversteer, you can see it there. All right, come through the corner, just a couple more now. Two more laps, P1, holding station with Gardner behind. Flat out under 
the Dunlop Bridge. Seems like those existed almost everywhere in the 60s. Down a first gear, just roll it on through. Slowest corner on the circuit there. The canal curve into the S's. Under the shell bridge, Ooh, a lot of oversteer there. And past these white fences, which just scream horse circuit to me. Oh, I'm gonna run a little wide there, missing the apex. Just try to get back on the line for the causeway. Second gear. Alright, one more corner to negotiate here. We'll come to start the final lap. Just slide it on through the final corner. So one more lap to go. Pulled out another second on Gardner, so it's within my grasp now. A little bit slow through the first sector, but no need to push too hard here on the last lap with such a good lead down a first just controlling the oversteer and understeer with your right foot over the bumps over the horse track all right, coming to the causeway for the final time here. You can see some cars off in the distance, but looks like I'm gonna have a clear circuit for the last few corners. Oh, hitting the curbing. Down a second gear, nice and steady through here. All right, one more corner to go, up to third gear. Just ease it on through, so Coming on to win the Tasman 100 here at Warwick Farm to start off the Australia leg in the championship. Oh, and it feels good to win. I seem to be winning a lot lately, winning the last Tasman round, winning the Daytona 24, and now winning at Warwick Farm. But sometimes it just gets handed to you. Jim Clark definitely had an issue because he was so fast for the first couple laps and then suddenly slowed down and I was able to work on by, but that's the best way I could start off this. Theoretically, we'll have to see, but Jim Clark would have scored no points and I would have gotten all of the points for this race. So here comes Gardner on his way by. Give him a little bit of a fist wave. Had a good duel with him for the first few laps. Oh, and yeah, Jackie Stewart. So looks like Jackie might have finished on the podium, which is good. He's been slower than he should be so far in this championship, but this is a great track, I'm really impressed. Even in its beta state, you might see a couple rough edges here or there, or I know a lot of the graphics they said they're using are temporary, but the track itself is, is good, and a lot of times what I worry about with a beta track or the AI, or it's just not tested well, but they've got that all figured out, so a little bit of cleanup here and there, and this one will be 100% ready for use. It honestly already looks way better than half of the tracks that exist for Grand Prix Legends anyway, so very very excited that this and the other Tasman tracks are going to be coming to Grand Prix Legends for everybody to enjoy but hope everybody enjoyed this little sneak peek of this one here we'll come around the final couple of corners though do the full victory lap which you got to do when you win a race and you can see actually to the left there the uh, horse track that comes around in the, the main grandstand for the horse track. I'm not sure if that would have been occupied for the auto races. It seems like it's kind of far away, but we'll dip it in the pits down at first gear and try to find my pit stall to park and end this one. All right, and taking a look at the final results and what a race of attrition, but up top, Richie Axelson getting the win from Frank Gardner and Jackie Stewart uh, on the podium. Spencer Martin, Jim Palmer, and Leo Gagan there. 
rounding out the points. So uh, pretty, pretty interesting grid up front, especially the second half of the points. But if we scroll down or look down here, uh, Marwood, McEwen, Clark had a gearbox issue, so maybe wasn't able to shift for a little while there. Uh, Bartlett, Levis, Cusack, and Hill had a valve go. Uh, I also got the fastest lap, which doesn't matter in the Tasman series, but yeah, quite a few cars breaking down here, which is a little more accurate for the times maybe, but handed myself the win. I don't know if I would have beaten Jim Clark on pace alone, but I'll take it however I can get it. And taking a look at the points, so I've claimed the lead in the championship by two points over Jim Clark with that win. Uh, so things are looking really good. I didn't think I was actually be able to, to pass him, but you know, since the first half of the championship is more or less set now, coming into the second half, uh, I've been able to get that lead with no more drop races until we get towards the end. Uh, but the next round will be the one that has to count, so that'll be really important. But two points on Jim Clark, Spencer Martin, in third place, Jim Palmer and the other Lotus back and forth, and then Jackie Stewart and Frank Gardner tied up. Uh, I believe Frank Gardner would have the edge on Jackie for his second place here today, but both with 10 points. So pretty interesting stuff for the championship, uh, taking the lead away from what seemed like maybe unbeatable circumstances, but he, your car has to last to the end of the race, and Lotus unfortunately not able to do that uh, thus far very often. So interesting round in the championship. So we'll be off to Lakeside in Australia for the Australian Grand Prix as the next round, just one week uh, in, in time from this race. So that'll be interesting. I have to do well there. Like I said, the points will count uh, no matter what. So um, it would be great to have another win just to really cement things. But appreciate everybody watching. Hope this was entertaining. I know I'm pretty excited for this uh, second half of the championship. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you all again next time.